Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring population dynamics and carrying capacity. Populations differ in many factors such as size or density or dispersion. Population dynamics will be the study of how these population characteristics will change in responses to changes in the environment. By studying populations, it will help us to understand their role in supporting ecosystems. Now in terms of dispersion, uh, depending upon where resources are, populations are going to be dispersed in various ways. Now most populations will live in clumps, like the elephants in this particular illustration, but there are other dispersion patterns that we might see from a uniform dispersion like creosote bushes here, or through a random dispersion like dandelions, and it's all based upon where the resources are for that population. Now, in general, uh, populations will increase as a result of births and immigration. Those individuals that are born and those individuals coming in are going to increase that population. Whereas populations will decrease when organisms die or leave an area through emigration. A simple formula can be generated in order for us uh, to kind of recognize and see what would be happening to a population in a given moment. So the population change would be equal to the births plus immigration minus the deaths plus emigration. Now, if there's a situation where our births and immigration are actually going to be equal to the deaths and emigration, then we're going to be in a very stable population where there's zero population growth, or ZPG. Now, all populations vary in their capacity for growth. This capacity for growth is referred to as its biotic potential. The intrinsic rate of increase would be the rate at which that population would grow if it had unlimited resources. How fast that population would increase over time with uh, unlimited resources to them. Now, typically, no population can increase indefinitely because rapidly growing populations will reach a size limit that's imposed by a shortage of resources or one or more various limiting factors. These limiting factors are referred to as the environmental resistance. So together, the biotic potential and the environmental resistance is going to be used to establish the carrying capacity for a population. The biological carrying capacity for a population would be the maximum population of a species that a habitat can sustain indefinitely without degrading that habitat. So you might reach a point where you have a maximum number that there could be in an area, but if that maximum number can't be sustained without degrading that habitat, that's not the carrying capacity. Now, most populations um, will uh, hover at or around that carrying capacity um, and will have kind of that theoretical carrying capacity, um, which would be that average number of individuals that we're going to be able to establish in that particular area. One important thing is that carrying capacity is not static. It's actually dynamic and it can change from season to season. Um, and like, for example, with sheep, if we have a really rich spring with lots of rainfall, so we have lots of grass, we might have a high carrying capacity. But the next year, as a result of drought, that area might have a much less carrying capacity. And so the carrying capacity for that environment might shift depending upon the environmental conditions and the environmental resistance, which is then present in that area for that time. Now, any population that actually exceeds that carrying capacity is uh, going to die, and they're going to have basically a population crash, unless uh, they're able to adapt to those changes or move to an area with more resources. Now, there's another kind of carrying capacity um, that we want to speak of here, um, but it'll become more important later, and that's the idea of cultural carrying capacity. The cultural carrying capacity is actually the number of uh, a particular species that the people can tolerate over time. So, for example, an area can support a, a whole bunch of healthy deer um, in the environment. 
But as a result of the people not wanting the deer around because of car accidents or them eating their expensive shrubbery, um, the cultural carrying capacity might be much less than that um, of the biological carrying capacity. Now, some of the limbing factors that are part of that environmental resistance have a greater effect on really dense populations. When you have a lot of individuals um, in close quarters in a small area. Um, some density dependent factors that are going to influence um, and impact more dense population more so than a less dense population would be things like disease or food availability. Whereas things like fire and weather and predators will equally impact individuals that are dense or less densely populated. Now, a lot of species actually have different reproductive patterns that will enhance their survival. Um, to the two major reproductive patterns that we'll want to look at are K-selected and R-selected species. R-selected species have a very fast uh, intrinsic rate of increase. They have a very fast growth rate. They're going to have lots of babies, lots of offspring, but they're typically small and they're able to live in um, envir various environments, um, even environments that um, are uh, highly changeable. Some great examples of our selected species would be like insects or dandelions. Case selected species uh, really have a slow growth rate, so their intrinsic rate of growth is going to be very, very slow. They typically have very few offspring, and the offspring are large, and they require additional kind of parental care, either before birth or after birth. Um, and then they need to exist in stable environments because their populations stay at or around the carrying capacity, and that's why they're called K-selected species. Depending upon the environment, population sizes may change. Um, they could stay the same, they could have great increases or decreases, they could be more cyclical, or have very erratic changes. Stable populations are those that fluctuate slightly above and below their carrying capacity. We see a lot of stable populations in more stable environments, like that of like tropical rainforests. Eruptive populations will have fat uh, explosions of population and then diebacks and a lot of uh, insect species will will see that for example uh, the cicadas have an eruptive life cycle cyclical populations are those that fluctuate um, at regular intervals with boom and bust cycles um, this is especially true of predator prey interactions as the predators uh, eat the prey, the prey die back, and then so do the predators, and vice versa. Of course, there are some populations that have more irregular uh, population changes, and typically these are due to major drastic changes that take place in the environment, um, and those are harder to predict in terms of what will happen to those populations into the future. The more that we study population dynamics, the better we'll be able to understand how populations and the changes that occur in them uh, impact biodiversity and sustainability so that we can find ways to maintain healthy populations of organisms so that they're able to support the environment and lead to a more sustainable future.